Hello everyone, welcome back to the weekly contest 276 solution and we have already solved the first three questions and it's time to look at the most interesting one which is maximum running time of n computers. Here in this question we are given n computers along with this we are given an array of batteries that, that can be used to plug in the computers. We need to identify the maximum number of times that you can run all the n computers simultaneously. So the, here they have specified two examples. I'll walk you through these examples. Also, this is the most interesting question of the entire contest. So I will urge everyone to look at the solution because you will definitely gonna learn something new in this. It's very interesting. So let's get started. And let me just start the slideshow. Minimum, maximum running time of N computers, lead code 2141. It's a hard level question on lead code. And I also feel the same. So let's get started. I want to reiterate what the question is asking us to identify. It We need to return the maximum number of minutes you can run all the N computers and the keyword here is simultaneously. If someone misses out on this word, then you're definitely not going to get the right solution. We are given two computers A and B. Let's keep identifiers for them. And we have three batteries 0, 1 and 2. In the first go, let's hook in 0 and 1 battery with A and B. So 0 gets attached to it and 1 gets attached to it. And for how much duration are we gonna consume these two batteries? We will consume these two batteries for a period of 2 minutes each. And let's consume both of them for a period of 2 minutes. Assume 2 minutes have lapsed. What is the remaining state of batteries? The remaining state of batteries is 1, 1, 3. And next we are, what we are going to do, we'll hook in the 0th battery and the 2nd battery instead of the first one. So 0 gets hooked to this and one gets uh, 2 gets hooked to this. So let's write their battery value count as well. And here we have 1. This is the index of the battery. This is the index of the battery. And for how much duration are we going to consume? The batteries will we'll consume it for a period of one minute. So this gets reduced to zero and this gets reduced to two. So one minute have lapsed and the next state of batteries is something like this zero, one, two. This time what we are going to do, we'll hook in this particular battery with one index to the eighth computer and this battery to the bth computer and let's do that so we have the first battery gets hooked to the eighth computer and the second battery gets hooked to the second computer and for how much duration are we going to consume the batteries for a period of one minute so one minute again have lapsed and the remaining state of batteries is zero and here we have one in total for how much duration would we able to run the computers 2 plus 1 plus 1 and this gives us 4 which is expected. Let's proceed ahead and let's try and look at the next example. Let me just change the color of pen. This time we have 4 batteries and the number of computers remain the same. So let's pro ident provide identifiers to the computers and let's provide identifiers to the battery. In the first go what we are going to do, let's choose these two batteries and let's hook in them, hook in, hook in to A and B. So 0 gets hooked in here, the battery value is 1. 1 gets hooked in here, the battery value is 1. 1 minute have lapsed. And what is the state of the batteries after this? We have 0, 0 here, we have 1, 1 here. Let's proceed ahead. Next we are going to go for the second and the third battery. Let's hook in the second one with A and the third one with B and the battery count is 1 1 for both of them. So 2 gets hooked in here and 3 gets hooked in here. And for how much duration are these two gonna operate for a period of 1 minute. So one after 1 minute what would be the state of the batteries? It would be 0 0 0 0. So for how much duration in totality were we able to run both the computers parallelly? It's for 2, di two minutes. One corresponding to this 1 minute, other corresponding to this 1 minute. I hope you understood this logic so far. This is exactly same to what was specified in the question. 
what is the first intuitive approach that comes to everybody's mind someone may think let's try and identify the total of all the batteries what would be that in this case 3 plus 3 plus 3 which gives us 9 and what are the number of computers that we have we have it as 2 so 9 divided by 2 gives us 4 in this case it matches with our expected answer but that's just by coincidence there's no surety of it i'll tell you by another example but somehow this logic finding out the total of all batteries and dividing it by the number of batteries the number of computers that we have works in this particular case so let's try and apply the same approach or formula on this particular case as well we have the batteries as 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 that gives us 4 4 by 2 gives us 2 again the formula works for us and that is why I always say try to think of some other test case than what is specified in the question here as well it matches with this algo and someone might try and attempt uh, this approach however it won't work why it won't work let's try and understand it by an example so let me just change the color of pen for the next iteration and the interesting case is this one we have three uh, computers a b and c and the battery configuration that is given to us is something like this 10 comma 10 comma 3 comma 5 let's try and think of the case how are we gonna set these batteries up so let's set uh, these three as 0 1 2 3 4 as identifiers for the batteries and let's hook in 0 1 2 with a b and c respectively so 0 gets hooked in here 1 gets hooked in here 2 gets hooked in here so the value here is 10 the value here is again 10 and the value here is 3 so what is the minimum out of these 3 the minimum out of these 3 turns out to be 3 that means we are going to operate these uh, th uh, 3 batteries for a duration of 3 minutes what is the remaining state of battery it's 7 7 0 5 and let's hook in the remaining 3 to these 3 computers we have 7 here we have 7 here we have 5 here for how much duration is it going to work it will work for the minimum duration out of these three which is nothing but five after five minutes what is the state of the batteries it's two comma two comma zero comma zero there are less than three batteries to operate the computers and the total operational time turns out to be equal to three plus five which is nothing but eight so the answer for this particular case turns out to be eight however let's try and apply the algo that we just discussed in the previous slide let's take the total sum of all these battery values it turns out to be 10 plus 10 plus 3 plus 5 which is nothing but 28 28 divided by 3 gives us 9 and the formula doesn't work however it gives us the hint it tells us the upper limit up till which the answer can be possible we can use this to our advantage so the upper bound that we could confirm happens to be 9 let's think about the lower bound lower bound would be equal to nothing but the least value that is present across all the batteries which turns out to be equal to 3 so the lower bound turns out to be equal to 3 now what we can do we can start the iteration from the lower bound and go up till the upper bound and one by one we can check whether a time span of 3 minutes can be sustained by the given set of batteries and the given configuration of n if it can be then we are well and good if it can't be then we have to abort that at that position so we'll go start from three we'll go up till four we can go up till five then we six then seven then eight and then nine however there is a smarter way approach as well so what we can do we can apply binary search over the range instead of the values so the lower bound range turns out to be equal to three the higher bound range turns out to be equal to nine We'll identify the middle value, which in this case turns out to be 3 plus 9 by 2, which is nothing but 6. And we will check whether we are able to sustain uh, the compute the three computers for a period of 6 minutes using these set of batteries. If we are able to, then we will increment the lower bound to mid plus 1. Otherwise, the higher bound get reduced to mid. We were pretty aware of the binary search algo. Uh, however, uh, I'll talk about more in the presentation. But I want to talk here on one aspect that given a set of time span, how will you identify whether we are able to sustain it for the given set of configuration of N that we have provided we have a battery array given to us. So that is another important aspect that I want to highlight going forward. So let's talk about, let's hypothetically assume 
uh, let's take the same example we have the lower bound as 3 we have the higher bound as 9 and what is the middle element the middle element turns out to be equal to 6 now we want to check whether a period of 6 minutes using the period of 6 minutes are we able to sustain these three computers given the set of battery configuration that we have since the time that we are looking for is 6 minutes and the number of computers that we have is 3 so the total target time span that over which these three computers should run in cumulative should be equal to 3 into 6 which gives us 18 and now let's start the iteration if we are able to achieve this 18 minutes of time span using this battery configuration then we can say that it is a possible valid scenario so let's get started let's calculate the current total sum count that we can able to accumulate using these given set of batteries the first one in the queue is 10 so let's operate this battery for a period of six minutes so we have operated it for a period of six minutes let's proceed ahead next we see is another 10 let's operate this battery for a period of six minutes awesome let's proceed ahead next we see is a three so that turns out to be an interesting case and let's operate this for a period of three minutes and this battery is gone now let's proceed ahead next we see is five and let's operate this battery for a period of three minutes again so in, to so in totality the last two batteries helped us achieve a cumulative sum of six minutes and the total sum turns out to be equal to 18 and we can say that we were successfully able to achieve at 18 minutes of total sum using the given set of configuration now let's proceed ahead uh, right now the lower bound is pointing to 3 the higher bound is pointing to 9 and the middle element happens to be 6 and we were able to successfully run the three computers for a period of 6 minutes what do we do in such case we increment the lower bound to mid plus 1 so low gets updated to 7 which is nothing but mid plus 1 the high remains as 9 and let's recalculate the middle pointer 7 plus 9 gives us 16 16 by 2 gives us 8 so let's operate it for a period of 8 minutes and let's revalidate using the same algo whether we are able to successfully operate these three computers for a period of 8 minutes let's try and do that uh, what is the total sum that we are looking for 3 into 8 gives us 24 so we are looking for a total sum of 24 so let's get started we will recreate the variable current total sum and let's start the iteration the first element that we see is 10 and we are looking for the total time span of 8 minutes so let's consume this battery for a period of 8 minutes next we have is another 10 so let's consume this again for a period of 8 minutes let's proceed ahead next we see is 3 and let's consume this for a period of three minutes and we'll use both these batteries in parallel one by one to get a total sum of eight minutes three plus five gives us eight and we how have we operated uh, these three computers the first one gets hooked to the first battery the second one gets hooked to the second battery and for the third one once the, th the this battery gets exhausted we have used the next battery which is of five time span so uh, 3 and 5 in totality helped us achieve a total sum of 8 minutes and what is the total sum that comes out using this it turns out to be 24 again a happy case let's proceed ahead and let me just change the color of pen for the next iteration and let's take blue this time so again what we are going to do since it was a happy case we'll update low to mid plus 1 so what where is low pointing to low pointing to 7 low will now point to mid plus 1 which is 9 low points to 9 high points to 9 we will check we'll recalculate the middle element the middle value again will come out to be 9 we'll check if this configuration is possible for not or not so the number of computers that we have is 3 the time span that we are looking for is 9 so 3 into 9 gives us 27 and let's start the iteration this is the most interesting case guys let's try to analyze it let's recreate the variable current total sum and let's start the iteration the first element that we see is 10 so let's consume this for a period of 9 minutes so the current total sum gets updated to 9 let's proceed ahead next we see is again a 10 let's consume this for a period of 9 minutes and what do we get we get 9 so total sum turns out to be 18 so far and we are looking for 27 
let's proceed ahead next we see is 3 let's consume it for a period of 3 minutes next we see is 5 let's consume it for a period of 5 minutes so is it possible to achieve a total sum of 27 using these two batteries no it's not possible so what is the total sum that we are able to achieve 9 plus 9 is 18 18 plus 3 is 21 21 plus 5 is 26 which is lower than 27 as a result it's not possible to survive all the three computers for a period of nine minutes now someone might get this question we have one one unit remaining from these two batteries as well so can we utilize them no the answer is no you cannot split one battery across two different computers that's the most important aspect that you cannot supply two different computers using a single battery and if you have understood this then you have understood the entire logic so let's quickly move on to the coding part and i'll exactly do the same steps as i have talked here so let's get started and let's try to think about the core algo first i have created a total sum variable i have created a low variable i start the iteration i start counting the cumulative sum of all the batteries that is given to me also i try to identify the lowest possible value present in the battery that will act as my low counter uh, what would be the high counter it would be equal to total sum by n plus 1 why plus 1 because we are looking for an inclusive range of low up till high it should be included therefore i added 1 to it i created another variable ans that will store the answer let's start the iteration low is less than high i go and calculate the middle element i have created a helper method that tells me whether this configuration of time the middle element is successful for n computers given the set of battery configuration that i have if it is possible then i update my answer variable to mid i update low to mid plus one otherwise i go and update my high to mid pretty simple and straightforward we have been doing this in pretty much all the questions of binary search in the past so it's nothing new in the end we simply return the answer variable now the question reduces to writing the can fit helper method appropriately so uh, we take in the current battery sum or the current total sum which I took in the presentation. I calculate the target battery sum which is nothing but n into time span value. So let's start the iteration. If my battery happens to be less than my time span, I add it to my current battery sum variable. Otherwise, I add the time span variable to the battery sum. This is the crux of the problem. In case my current battery sum happens to be greater than the target battery sum, that means it's a valid configuration and I abort the process there and then itself. Otherwise, I again, once I'm out of the loop, I check whether current battery sum happens to be greater than target battery sum. Pretty simple and straightforward. It's exactly the same as I talked about in the presentation. The crux lies in, in this particular if else statements. So let's try this up. Surprisingly, it gives me error. Oh, sorry. Accept it. This brings me to the end of today's session. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for viewing it. Have a great day ahead and stay tuned for more updates from Coding Decoded. I'll see you tomorrow with another fresh question. But till then, goodbye. And with this, we have successfully completed all the questions of the weekly contest 276. I'm attaching the link to all the questions in the description below.